Republicans are pushing to politicize and sanitize and rewrite American history textbooks. So Newsweek is reporting on this. They say, The company behind advanced placement courses for U.S. high school students will release a revision to the standards for AP U.S. history after significant pushback from conservatives who claimed the redesigned course framework released last year painted American history in too negative a light. They continue, last year after the College Board released its redesigned standards for AP U.S. history, a document more than a decade in the making, Oklahoma, Georgia, and Texas all introduced bills threatening to pull the course altogether. The Jefferson County School District in Colorado convened a board meeting, I'm sorry, a board committee to review the curriculum stating that all materials should promote patriotism and respect for authority and should not encourage or condone civil disorder okay I find that hilarious because the whole idea of America is that we are not a dictatorship we are not a tyranny we are not a fascist country we don't have a unitary executive leader we have checks and balances within our government that's the whole idea behind the three co-equal branches of government but they said when they protested the AP history book they said we need a history book that uh, promotes respect for authority and patriotism, or in other words, not just patriotism, nationalism. They want, and not just that, a hyper-nationalism, where it's this idea that uh, we're never wrong, and if you criticize the country, it's akin to treason. It, you know, you're a traitor or you're treasonous if, if you say, uh, hey, we did this thing wrong here. Oh my God, you're not being patriotic. Respect authority. So it's ridiculous. And to say, hey, we shouldn't encourage or condone civil disorder, well, what the fuck do you think it was when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was doing the marches? What do you think the civil rights movement was? That was civil disorder. That was civil disobedience. And they did it because they said, the laws are not perfect and we want to form a more perfect union, so we are going to fight for what's right. We're going to fight for what's just. But again, the conservative argument is, eh, we don't like that. You might change the system as it exists right now. You might change the power structure. And God forbid you do that, then we lose power and we're a bunch of idiots. So we want to hold on to our jobs and we want to keep the power structure in place. So leave it like it is and don't you dare embrace civil disorder. But I haven't gotten to the best part yet. So are you ready for this? The new, I guess, chapter or segment that they added to the AP textbook is, quote, a new section on the concept of American exceptionalism. Oh, come on. History books, textbooks, they're supposed to be as factual as possible. You're just supposed to give information. You're supposed to give data. But they're like, put a chapter on American exceptionalism. Now, understand... There were concerns from the right about, hey, uh, certain founding fathers have been left out here and there, and there's no coverage of America's role in World War I or World War II. And I actually don't know the details of what was in the old textbook. The article didn't lay it out. So perhaps, uh, you know, to a certain degree, there are some valid criticisms. But I'd have to see. I'd have to read the old textbooks and find out if that indeed is true. I find it hard to believe they didn't put you know, the U.S. role in World War One or World War Two in there. But the idea that these guys are saying, we want a more factual book. Now, add the chapter on American exceptionalism. But wait, that is not factual. It is not indeed correct that Americans are inherently superior to people in other countries. But see, again, this is the oldest conservative trick. Whatever they accuse liberals of doing, that's what they do. She's like, oh, these goddamn liberals doing propaganda to our kids. <laughs> Trying to teach them about, like, evolution and climate change. Trying to teach them science and facts. Well, you know, forget that. We want to teach the kids. Hey, put the thing in there about Jesus riding the dinosaur, and oh yeah, Americans are the best ever, we're exceptional, and by definition, we are better than everybody. So wait, we're not the ones doing propaganda. We're not the ones doing brainwashing. You're the ones doing brainwashing. How do you add a chapter on American exceptionalism to an AP history book? Think about what that means, American exceptionalism. What it means is, uh, 
Americans are exceptional compared to everybody else, aka everybody else is lesser than Americans. So they're they're trying to make kids believe unquestionably, hey, you can't look at somebody in Iran as equal to you. You can't look at somebody in Switzerland as equal to you. You can't look at somebody from Australia or Japan as equal to you. So when the U.S. government wants to continue to do imperialism and continue to take natural resources and continue to try to be the world policeman and we kill civilians and whatnot, we're going to try to ingrain in your mind that it's okay because we mean well, we have good intent, and we're the good guys by definition. So you overlook it when we do fucked up things because we're exceptional. So we have a right to act like this. Whereas others, I mean, look... Uh, would it be fair if in, you know, whatever country you want to talk about, in Sudan, they write about Sudanese exceptionalism? Can the French write about French exceptionalism? Uh, can, I don't care, you pick the fucking country. Can they write about it in Bolivia? If they write about Bolivian exceptionalism in the textbooks over there, would Americans look at that and go, yeah, that's totally fine. They're just writing about Bolivian exceptionalism. I don't see a problem with that. No, we'd look at that and say, that is ridiculous propaganda. No, a Bolivian is not inherently superior to an Argentinian. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. But when we do it, they, th they think they're keeping it real. They think they're like, oh, yeah, we showed those liberals. We're the ones telling the truth. Uh, we're inherently better than everybody else. No, you're not keeping it real. You're not telling the truth. You're not doing facts. You're doing the opposite. You're the ones doing propaganda. You're the ones doing brainwashing. And by the way, what are they really angry about when it comes down to it in the old textbooks? You know because they've spoken about it before in all the different red states. You know, you covered slavery and the white people kind of look like the bad guys. So, like, soften the message as to how fucked up the white people were because we're white and we don't like that. That's what it really comes down to. Don't talk about Jim Crow. Don't talk about segregation. Don't talk about slavery. Don't talk about the Native American genocide. Don't talk about uh, dropping the atom bomb on Japan. Leave out all that stuff because, oh, that makes us look like we're assholes. So... Leave out that stuff and we'll pretend like leaving that out makes it more factual. No, no, leaving that out makes it less factual. It's more factual to tell the truth. And by the way, when you don't tell the truth, then I question your motive. Then I question, hey, why are you so defensive about this? Perhaps because you were in favor of the Native American genocide? You were in favor of slavery? You were in favor of Jim Crow? You didn't think it was such a horrible thing when we dropped the atom bomb on all those civilians in Japan? That's what I started I started thinking, oh... You seem very defensive over this. I mean, the only reason why you'd be defensive is what? You kind of believe it, and you don't want to have to defend it. So you say, leave it out, leave it out. Leave out the facts, because the facts are inconvenient to my ideology. No, you put in the facts, because when you put in the facts, people actually learn from history, and when they learn from history, they're probably not going to repeat it. In your ideal uh, scenario, they don't learn from those things, and possibly they repeat it, because after all, we are exceptional. So it doesn't matter what fucked up stuff we do, because we're good.